Hello, it's me, Rebecca. I eat books. Mm, not a lot recently, but I will again one day. <laughs> Today is December 31st. I thought I would do a little reading wrap up for the year, talk about some of my favorites. I've prepared nothing for this video, but it'll be fine. It's gonna be okay. Let me pull up my Goodreads, my Goodreads for the year. Okay, at the end of November, I had read 90 books, which put me at or even like ahead of schedule for my goal of reading 100 books this year. Um, then I had some like hashtag personal life in December and I read one book, one tiny book, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody was great. So we're at 91 books for the year and that's fine. That is definitely the worst reading month I've had. I mean, ever, like since I was an infant, I don't know, ever. That's okay, it was also just the worst month ever, so. <laughs> we're gonna get back into reading in 2023. It's fine. Okay, now we're gonna do my superlatives. These are made up and the points don't matter. Because I'm wild, I picked a favorite book of the year, just number one, because I felt like it. So call me crazy. Ready? For best narrator, Carson McCullers, The Member of the Wedding. This book is narrated by a child, teen, preteen, preteen, whose older brother is getting married and she is obsessed with this fact in the way that little kids get obsessed with things. She decides she's going to marry them too. She's going to be the third member of the wedding. It's so perfect the way it encapsulates that feeling when you're young of the world is happening around you and to you and you have no agency and you feel like you're being left behind and you're confused about what the rules are. You just want so much more than you currently have access to. And people tell you, just wait till you grow up, which is the most frustrating thing in the world. Love this book. Okay, for thinkiest, I have a tie between Whole Studies and Death by Landscape. Whole Studies by Hilary Plum, Death by Landscape by Elvia Wilk. Both really smart essays thinking about very contemporary subjects and issues. I think that even the premise of the Elvia Wilk to me was just, can you hear the dog is right there, six inches from the screen and he's decided to start bathing himself, licking his full body. So if there are licking noises in this video, you're welcome. The premise of Death by Landscape is like the convergence of, it takes a theme that I love, which is like the power of writing, why we write, why we read, what role does literature play politically, socially, and then it applies that specifically of science fiction to climate change, the issue of climate change. It meanders in some confusing ways and then comes around to make strong points, I think. Whole study similarly, Hilary Plum's brain just did some really great stuff for me. Both these books, I thought, as soon as I finished reading them, I was like, I want every woman in my life, every smart woman in my life to read these and talk about them with me. Whole Studies also had a great cover. And it's from a great little press called Phonograph Editions out of Portland. I said Lucy was my funniest book of the year, Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid. This is one of those things where you, when you immediately read the book, maybe funny isn't what would have occurred to me, but what has stuck with me many months later is the dry humor with which Lucy just operates in the world. Lucy is a story of a Caribbean immigrant moving to New York City to be a live-in nanny. Hush, that's enough, thank you. Thank you. And she's obviously faced with this wealthy white family who don't recognize their privilege. They are these outrageous class issues and race issues. She's confronted with this insane new reality and the way that she acknowledges and contends with this insanity I found to be very funny and dry. And that is what has stuck with me in this book. Most manless. I described, I think every book on this list is incredibly female because that's what really get, does it for me. But women talking and 
Matrix were two books that were especially female. Matrix is about this group of nuns in a convent. Because they're in a convent, it's this very controlled space without men, and the entire world of the book is in within the walls of the convent. In Women Talking, the book takes place over the course of a weekend in a very contained Mennonite community, but all the men are away for the weekend. The women are conferring, they're talking, and they're coming to a decision at the end of this weekend. Both books have created these circumstances of these controlled, confined spaces of like manufactured female places. Uh, in some ways, The Wall does this too, although The Wall is just one woman in a very manufactured setting. But I love both of these books. They were extremely successful in this conceit. Then I decided to award a book with the most don't give a fuck attitude. And that was Aurelia Aurelia, which is Catherine Davis's memoir. I love that she decided to write a memoir and said, I don't really care for chronological order. I'm gonna do whatever I want, order the book around what matters to me. And so that might be a theme or a movie or a song. And I'm just gonna tell different events and stories from my life that happened years apart around this theme and then I'll move on to the next theme that matters to me. To me it felt like she had reinvented the memoir. I loved it so much. I love being in her brain. More Catherine Davis is on my plans for 2023 reading for sure. For sweetest I put The Woman Who Killed the Fish by Clarice Lyspector. This is a collection of children's stories that was published by New Directions this year and I loved it so much. It was charming in the way that children's stories can be, but it never felt patronizing or talking down to children. I loved it so much. It, it's tiny, it'll take you 20 minutes to read, but it's so sweet. Please pick this up. Okay, then I, of course I have a section called Ruined My Life and this was Adrian Rich and Amya Srinivasan. I highly recommend you read these side by side and then tell me that you can function in your daily life still because I doubt that you will be able to. You can definitely tell that The Right to Sex is very much in conversation with Adrian Rich so I recommend you read in that order Adrian and then Amya. It's so interesting because Adrian is very much like a second wave feminist and Amya is a woman of color, a very contemporary progressive feminist. The way that she builds on the foundation set by Rich to just explode the world. This is a book that came out 2021, I think, or 2020 even. So much is out there in the world about this book already. I'm saying nothing new, but the hype was real on this one for me. My favorite two poetry collections that I read this year also include an Adrian Rich. I read Diving Into the Wreck this year. Diving Into the Wreck, also an anthem for me for 2023. <laughs> And I also read To Write to See by Linda Gregg. I searched for this for months, found it with CJ at Towels in Portland. It was a beautiful moment. Read it twice, cover to cover, uh, in like a week. It was amazing, loved it. And then my favorite book that I read this year, best all around, drum roll please. No one's gonna be surprised because I already talked about this book a thousand times, but it's Boulder by Eva Balthazar. Oh. This book, our narrator is a woman who works as a cook on ships, falls in love with a woman, settles down, they have a child, their world explodes. The book is like incredibly romantic and sad and deeply felt. Oof. This book ruined me in the best possible way. I'm excited to reread this book in 2023. So those were my superlatives, my awards. There were some other favorites that I enjoyed this year that I'm going to give some shout outs to now. I'll talk about these in my favorite backlist and my favorite 2022 releases. My favorite backlist reads of 2022. Let's see. I always love literally everything I've ever read by Jeanette Winterson. They're really easy to come by in used bookstores, so I just have a million of them upstairs and I just pull one out whenever I need a good dose of Jeanette. So this year I read The Passion. It was 
freaking amazing. I read A Fairly Honorable Defeat by Iris Murdoch. So, so perfectly Iris. Uh, Mating, I think Mating was the first or second book I read in 2022. Really nothing like it. It's the perfect book. I might reread it. Really delicious. Plant Dreaming Deep by May Sarton. May, like Jeanette, cannot miss for me. So go back to whenever I need a hug. Deborah Levy's Hot Milk, amazing. Inferno, a poet's novel by Eileen Miles was one of my absolute favorite books this year. In the Distance by Hernan Diaz, so good. Paradise Rod, Rod, I talked a lot about it when I read it, delicious. The High Road by Edna O'Brien, one of the best endings I read this year for sure. The Last Samurai, genius. The Awakening by Kate Chopin, also angry and female, I loved it. Okay, my favorite 2022 releases. Okay, so Pure Color is a 2022 release. I technically read it at the end of 2021. I talked about it in my wrap up video of favorite books of 2021 last year. So I'm using it in both, which is definitely cheating. Body Work by Melissa Phoebos. I think she's amazing. That's not anything new. I, um, everyone else does too. Check Out 19 by Clay Louise Bennett. I was so pleased to see that this was on a lot of the best books of the year lists because it's not for everybody maybe, but I was pleased to see it get some love. This is a book about loving books and also a little bit about surviving sexual violence and it was phenomenal. Kick the Latch by Catherine Scanlon, so good and weird. Oral history of growing up in horse racing. Love Me Tender, incredibly angry about a woman fighting for custody of her son. Trust by Ernie Diaz, this was also on a lot of best books of the year lists. When I heard that this was like a same story told multiple ways, I was like, everybody's done that, but it wasn't, it was so smart. The Wall by Marlon ha Marlene Haas Hopkar, definitely an old book from the 60s, but it was re-released by New Directions this year. So I put it in my 2022 releases pile. This also a perfect book, a woman and her dog making a life for themselves exactly how they want it to be every day. All right. That was my year in reading. Thank you all for being here with me in 2022. I hope you stick around with me in 2023. 2023, let's do it, I guess. I guess let's go. I love you, nerds.